On New Year's Day 2001, a young German student disappeared into the bitterly cold night. Over 18 years later, with interesting new clues having emerged, hope has been rekindled that in the near future, this case will be solved. Katrine Konert was a 15-year-old from Vadovites, located in Lower Saxony, Germany. Just 24 hours previously, she had been celebrating the start of 2001 with her family, but on the night of the 1st, she was in Bergen and der Doom, in the company of her boyfriend Joachim, who was in his late 20s. The pair who'd been dating for a couple of months apparently had an argument and Katrine decided that she wished to go home, which was only about nine and a half miles from Bergen. She planned on travelling by car, however Joachim for one didn't own a vehicle and although she had texted a couple of friends asking for help, Katrine couldn't find someone to give her a ride. Therefore, she decided to take the bus. She left her boyfriend's residence at approximately 6.50pm and went to the nearby bus stop, waiting for transport which was due to arrive by half past seven that evening. When the bus arrived, however, Katrine had vanished. On the night she disappeared, Katrine had told her parents that she was staying with a friend. However, during the investigation, it became apparent that she had been engaging in a secret relationship with an acquaintance of her best friend, Stephanie, which was Joachim. She had been described as having a confident, bubbly personality, yet in recent weeks, according to her family, she had acted very much like a typical rebellious teenager. She had been snappy and irritable, telling an acquaintance she wanted to run away, and she had recently been caught smoking by her father, which resulted in a heated argument between father and daughter. During the initial search, authorities scoured woodland, ponds and moors, yet there was no trace of Katrine. Her father believed that his daughter had just run away, however with each passing day this seemed less likely to be the case, and presently police believe Katrine was murdered. After speaking with various witnesses, friends and family, police were able to piece together a timeline of what happened on the night of the 1st of January 2001. Between 2 and 2.15pm, Katrine left her parents' home, telling them she was going to visit her best friend, Stephanie, who had previously agreed that she would serve as a cover for Katrine when she visited her boyfriend, Joachim. Shortly after this time, she was picked up by one of Joachim's friends, who drove her to her boyfriend's apartment in Bergen. She arrived between half past two and quarter to three. The couple spent the afternoon together watching videos, however they did get into an argument, although it is not clear what the context of this argument was. At 5pm, Stephanie sent a message to Katrine. Stephanie had originally intended to visit her friend, but because of the treacherous weather conditions, especially the black ice, she decided to cancel. Katrine began contacting many friends at half past five, asking for a ride home. At 20 to six, Katrine took a phone call with Sven, a friend of Joachim's, who said he could pick her up instantly, but Katrine rejected this offer, saying it was too early to go home just yet. At 6pm, one of Katrine's sisters received a message allegedly from Katrine stating that she planned on returning to Vadovites between 6.30 and 7pm. The phone number wasn't familiar to the sister, so she deleted the message and then told her mother. At 6.47pm, Katrine left Joachim's apartment and was seen by a witness three minutes later passing the church, heading towards the bus stop. At 7pm, one of Katrine's friends, Martin, passed her in his car. He decided to slow and offered her a ride home. 
Martin was rather notorious for driving too fast and considering the black ice on the roads, Katrine decided to decline this offer. This was the last time anyone saw Katrine Conart as by half past seven, she was absent from the bus stop. Her sister attempted to send a text to Katrine's phone at half past seven, however, the message was unable to be delivered. A witness came forward in 2002 saying she had seen a female matching Katrine's description speaking to someone in a black BMW with Berlin license plates that night by a bus stop. The witness wasn't local to the area and had gotten lost and police took her to the bus stop and some other stops however the witness didn't appear to recognise the area. Police don't believe the witness's account is significant to the investigation and they couldn't verify that the sighting was on that night, however a later development in the case would match the witness's claim of seeing the same black BMW. Many people of interest were investigated by law enforcement. First of all was Joaquim, Katrine's secret boyfriend. He was romantically linked to the sister of Katrine's best friend Stephanie and he had been involved in a motorcycle gang. He first met Katrine whilst driving both she and Stephanie home after school. The pair also occasionally joined him at gang meetings. On the day Conert vanished, he told authorities that they had got into an argument and she wanted to leave. He offered to pay for a taxi to take her home, but she didn't take him up on the offer. She exited his apartment at 6.47pm and this was the last time he saw her. When Katrine didn't arrive home, her sisters and one of their boyfriends went to Joaquim's apartment and found him in a drunk and disorientated state. They said that Joaquim told them Katrine had planned on hitchhiking. Police and forensic teams searched Joaquim's residence, however nothing was found to suggest that he was involved in his girlfriend's disappearance. A few days later, Stephanie and Joaquim took it upon themselves to search the area for any trace of Katrine, but to no avail. As of 2019, the pair remain friends. Christian, a friend who Katrine had messaged that night, told authorities that he and his girlfriend saw her passing the church as they exited a pizza restaurant at around 6.50pm. There were rumours swirling that Christian had a crush on Katrine, however he denied this. Like Martin, they drove past her and shared a conversation. Christian dropped off his girlfriend at her residence and headed towards a petrol station located a bit further up the road from the bus stop. If Katrine had changed her mind and decided to walk home, he would have seen her, however he claimed he saw nothing. Christian returned to his girlfriend's apartment at 9pm. Katrine's friend Martin was also questioned and gave his version of events. He saw her at the bus stop and offered her a ride, however due to his reputation as a bit of a reckless driver and the adverse weather conditions, she refused. He said following this, he drove straight to his girlfriend's house, which was about two minutes away from the bus stop, arriving at 8pm. His girlfriend's account, however, does not corroborate with his. She said she distinctly remembered that Martin arrived after she had been watching a specific television programme for a while, which began airing at quarter past eight. According to Martin's girlfriend, he didn't allow police to search his vehicle until some time later and his apartment was kept under surveillance, but nothing of interest was found. The final person of interest was Sven, who was Joaquim's friend and had called Katrine on the evening of the 1st of January. That afternoon, Sven had been in the company of friends and had received a message from Katrine about getting a ride home at 20 to 6. He replied saying he could come and collect her right away, however she wished to go slightly later. An hour later, she texted him again, asking for him to get her at 7pm. Whilst investigating phone records, it was found that Katrine had called Sven a couple of moments later, yet the call only lasted a couple of seconds, and the context of the call, or whether it was merely just a voicemail message, was never known. 
Sven claimed that he ordered a pizza using his girlfriend's phone not long before 7pm. However, phone records showed that the last call made on the device was made at 6.18pm and no calls were ever made to the pizza place. Sven insisted that he picked up his order almost instantly, yet employees of the pizza restaurant were unable to confirm this when questioned, frustratingly, a decade later. He also told police he rejoined his friends with his pizza, but none of his companions could recall that occurring. At half past seven, he apparently drove past the bus stop, but saw no sign of Katrine. At a quarter to nine, Sven met with his girlfriend and the couple planned on going to a bar. Despite their investigation and suspicions, police never made any arrests in this case and over the years, the trail had gone cold. In 2006, however, Katrine's sister received an anonymous phone call, which only lasted a couple of moments. The caller was a female speaking German and had a strong European accent, however it hasn't been specifically distinguished as to where in Europe. The caller stated, I'm calling because of your sister, the one who disappeared, BMW, Black, Hamburg. The call then ended. Investigations traced the call to a phone booth on an industrial estate in Nuremberg, which was over 300 miles from Vadovites. The location sparked rumours that Konert could have been forced into prostitution or sex trafficking. The same card used for that call also attempted three previous calls, one to a detective at the homicide department at Berlin Police and another to a business consultant in Hamburg. Both of these were never connected. The last call before the one to Katrine's sister was to a deactivated United Kingdom mobile number which has since never been reactivated. The black BMW could be linked to that seen by the lost witness in 2002, but it has never been made official. In 2017, graffiti was found at the bus stop, which read Katrine Konat had been abused by Busa and Jägern. Graffiti with the same handwriting, quoting Gota, was discovered at another bus stop, but it is not confirmed whether the graffiti is connected to the disappearance of Katrine Conart. As recently as 2018, there have been a few new developments in this case. German broadcaster NDR published an in-depth, multi-episode podcast regarding this case, which includes interviews with the family and friends of Katrine. In November, German police received an anonymous call with interesting information, allegedly stating a possible location where Katrine Konert is buried, somewhere in Woodland near Bergen. They excavated a stretch of the forest, yet no success so far has been made in finding the girl's body. No more information was made public, however, police made an appeal for the individual who made the tip to contact them again. Many theorise about what could have happened to 15-year-old Katrine Conart on that fateful night of the 1st of January 2001. She may have been picked up by one of her friends or an acquaintance and was either accidentally or intentionally killed. She could have been abducted by a stranger or a member of the motorcycle gang whilst hitchhiking and was murdered or sold into the sex trade. Perhaps she walked home in the dark that night and got lost, or maybe she met with foul play. Authorities have also not excluded the idea that a serial killer could have been the perpetrator. A specific name is rumoured to be a potential suspect, but their identity has not been made public. With renewed interest in this case, the Conart family hope that the case will be solved and finally the fate of Katrine will be known. Door-to-door inquiries took place in October 2018 in order to freshen people's minds and thousands of leaflets have been handed out in the area. Police have also set up a tip line and have offered a €10,000 reward for any information which could lead police to Katrine Conart.